And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. No, you are not hallucinating. This is not Deja Vu or Vuja Day. But it, but it is a special episode of, Ge of Geek Watch, something that I've tried to get off of the, gr get off of the ground for years. Because I am not, I am not alone with this particular very special, um, special. I have one, I have one of the one of the long-standing good good brothers with it within my inner, within my inner circle. A man who a man who is a man who is no, who is known as a very analytical sort, although fortunately not high class enough to be do, to be doing this with a glass of wine, as far as I know. The one and only Daniel Santos. How you doing today, man? Oh, thank you for the auspicious opening. Uh, I was not <laughs> expecting that. Thank you. <laughs> well, that, that's the first rule here. That's the first rule here in my temple. Expect the unexpected. The second rule is drinking. The third rule is also drinking. <laughs> I've got those rules down. No um, wine, though. <laughs> um, Don't worry. Not not that up my own ass. <laughs> no. um, but. You and but you and I are t are tales fans of are tales fans of a sort who have who have um who are currently are currently in fandom jail for the un for the unforgivable crime of liking Grace's F. Fuck that man! <laughs> Grace's F is awesome. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Grace's F is fantastic. Yep, but with a rise coming around the corner in in. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's even gone gold yet. Um, I'm not sure, but it will be coming out as of this recording in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So it is. Uh, it is almost here. Yeah, I say I say that kind of thing because until until it's actually gone gold, there's always the po there's always the possibility of delays. So that's true. Yes. Hopefully, it comes out on time. Knock on wood. But mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. But given given what given what I do and and given what given what you do, I fig I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to have to have the to have the proverbial mega powers combined. That one was for you, Maddie. With with this particular episode that I am calling from tails to tabletop. Because nice. Unlike some unlike some of my colleagues within the tabletop gaming space. I do. I am not of the opinion of trying to ghettoize um, fan fantasy fan um, fantasy tabletop gaming from bringing in elements of an of anime and video games. I was I was front I was front and center during the during the during the bullshit of the tome of, of tome of battle where it had the gall to take inspiration from. Um, I think they mentioned Final Fantasy and Devil May Cry when it came to when it came to the maneuver system that was introduced in that, and because it had the gall to give fighters some interesting things to do, so a lot of people cried foul. Um, and just so, just so everything just so everything is on this is on the same page, uh, since you can't since you can't um, see it since I'm not doing screen share of it, um, I pr I present to you, Daniel the um cover art for this particular endeavor. I think you'll appreciate the spread that our good brother Shades had had put together. Nice, nice. I I like it. Mm -hmm. Tried tried to get tried to get at le at least one from different generations. Um appropriate, yeah. And when tr because of because of that, I've um because of where I where I cut my teeth, there's there's always been plenty of attempts to to adapt various properties into tabletop, and it's been that's been a tradition going from day one. A lot of a lot of a lot of the early D and D stuff is very clearly ripped from from various media's, whether it be the, whether it be the um Vancy, whether it be the Vancy and Magic system that Forrest wouldn't let that Forrest wouldn't let go of that term for years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or the or the fact that some, that some of the early um, warrior or barbarian art is very clearly trying to be not Conan and not fooling anyone, 
or the f- legally distinct Conan, mm-hmm. or the fact that the um that the that a lot of a lot of the early cleric spells were were um in, were inspired by were inspired by various miracles. I could I could go I could go on quite quite a bit. The point is a lot of a lot of early D and D is a amalgamation of things that Gygax and Arneson happened to be fans of at the time. Whether it be whether it be Dying Earth, Conan, um, the El- the Elric um, series by Michael Moorcock as part of his Eternal Champion meta series, the list go the list goes on, and of, mm. and of course and of course Lord of the Rings because because of course, <laughs> yes. Um, look, modern got, fantasy owes a lot to Tolkien. Look, I got nothing I got nothing against Tolkien, but I will always I will always resent the idea that I have to be taking notes from him if I'm do, if I'm doing any kind of fantasy. That's fair. Um and I bring I bring up that kind of thing because I distinctly remember being on old forums and pe- and people saying Planescape Torment shouldn't be called fantasy because of how weird it was. That's that one has nothing to do with the other. Um, putting aside the fact that weird fiction has been has been a thing since the twenties, even before that, um, mm. now H.P. Lovecraft's work are arguably count as weird fiction rather than um, horror. Certainly doesn't help that they were all published in weird tales back then. But the but I resent the I resent the idea. I've talked to, I've talked about the concept of design by gospel. Um. Or and stuff and stuff like buzzword criticism that as as we've as we've used in in the past. Yes. And the idea the idea of the idea that you ha- that you have to do th- you have to do things a certain way just because that's the way you've done it is circular. Um. And that br- that brings that brings me to to something like tales now. Obviously, obviously, the Tales series mm-hmm. has had a long and tumult. Even before, even before it got off the ground, it had a tumultuous history because yes. we could we could probably do we could probably do a a one hour lecture just just on the just on the drama that happened with the first game. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a whole history lesson in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I will I will admit that. There's a small part of me that that would be curious to read the to read the original tales of what well, the original story that would have become Tales of Fantasia. I would too. Um, I don't think that was ever officially published, though. Uh, at, or at least, if it was, it's not in English in any war in any form, unfortunately. Yeah, I know now. Um, as far as far as as far as the whole officially published thing. I'm reminded of how um, Harlan Ellison did publish the original script for City on the Edge of Forever, the um, Star Trek episode that yes. got him that got him a Hugo, and he almost got, and yeah. um, he almost rejected it until until he was forced to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he did he did release that at, he did release that in book form with his own comments on on why he didn't care for the televised version. In a very Harlan Ellison way, because Ellison was science fiction's original grumpy old man. Yeah, he was a crotchety old fuck, but that's why we liked him. Um, well, that and he could tell a really good story. He could tell. He could tell a really. He could tell a really good story. He could be involved in a really good story. Case in point, him getting him getting fired from development of the first Star Trek movie. <laughs> By Not surprising. <laughs> um. But, I, I believe Terminator was also influenced by his work to some degree. Yeah, he 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 accused Cameron of ripping off two of his stories, um, Soldier and Demon with a Glass Hand. Um, and truth be truth be told, I've re- I've read both of those stories and I've seen their interpretations on the, on the Twilight Zone. Um, the link is not as strong as Ellison thought it was, but. Cameron did get himself in trouble when he tiredly said that he that he, that he was that he was that he was ripping off two Twilight Zone stories. Obviously said in jest, but that was something that that was going to get pounced on. Uh, it was just enough for Harlan to uh, 
yeah, start talking shit. And in in Cameron's defense, one um, because of because of a miscommunication, the ter- the Terminator ske- the Terminator skeleton was a lot heavier than it was supposed to be. It was supposed to it was supposed to be made out of um out of fi- out of um I think it was like fiberglass with a with chrome. Pretty pretty standard for the time. It ended up getting made out of cast iron. Which obviously is a lot heavier. They needed 3 people to move the thing, not helped by the fact that they were doing guerrilla filming. IE no permits. Oh, I didn't know that actually. <laughs> yeah. So every time they do a scene, it's cut, roll, print. And everybody run before the cops show up. It's it's funny because I rem- I actually read Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, biography, mm-hmm. and he talked about the filming of Terminator, but he never mentioned anything about uh, there not being any permits. I'm guessing he neglected to mention it just in case. <laughs> um, I think I think by the. Depend. I think by that point, the uh, the he wouldn't have been in any trouble because he was he was just an actor in the thing. I mean, all all that all that would sure. is just accessory, and that'd be just a glorified slap on the wrist. Plus, I get the feeling he didn't even know because this was this was his um this was his thir- this was the third thing that he was in, and there was yeah. Like, he... The funny thing the funny thing about it is originally he was going to be Kyle Reese. Yeah, I I remember that. I do remember that. Um, but uh, it, yeah, eventually he he realized that like he related a lot to the Terminator, and uh, there in the book he mentioned how he kind of admired and re- and wanted to be like the Terminator because the Terminator doesn't sleep, and he was like, oh my god, I wish I had, you know, that ability to just be able to constantly just keep going no matter what and not have to sleep on one on one hand i could see that on the other hand he's kind of blowing smoke because that's not entirely what happened um because orig- orig- the original plan was he was going to be pl- he was going to be kyle reese and the terminator was going to be played by oj simpson <laughs> that would have been terrible <laughs> Um, and the movie would have aged so much worse. <laughs> yes, um, but because but because of, because of um, because of some bullshit invo- involving 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 D- involving Dito De Laurentiis, who was a massive cheapskate, um, he for a while he for a while he was trying to get um, Cameron was trying to get Schwarzenegger off the project. Then he was trying to get him back on because the, because the Simpson thing didn't work out to the point where he. He told his roommate one day, "Hey, do I owe you any money? Because I'm about to pick a fight with Conan." <laughs> um, but he and Arnold at the time, Arnold at the time wasn't too enthused about the project because he didn't want to get typecast. I mean, yeah, I, I do remember him mentioning that in a, that he didn't he didn't want to do it at first, mm-hmm. but yeah, eventually he uh, he decided to do it, and we got a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, now. Getting getting back on getting back on the proverbial rails when it comes when it comes to tales. Um, yes. I I ended up doing a bit of research to see if to see if anybody had anybody had attempted this even if in spirit because obviously we're not, obviously nobody's going to get the actual license. Um, I mean there might there, I mean they might be one but the the only um, Japanese company I know who really really double dips like that is Kadokawa and I don't think and they're nowhere near this. Um, I only bring that up because there is no. a Japanese tabletop adaptation of um, Dark Souls. I know it exists. I've seen cover art for it, but I don't know too much about how it works other than that it uses D sixes. I did not know that existed. That I think Dark Souls could work perfectly tabletop. That sounds like a good idea. Well, it it is a good idea, and it's been done a dozen times. Um. All of them, all of them with different systems. I covered one of them that was a fan-made project called Dice Souls, and of course, there's the. Uh, That's a good name. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Yeah, that was a that was a TG project. I had some interesting ideas. Um, unfortunately, I can't seem to I can't seem to find the original link of it. But when it came to when it came to t- when it came to Tales, unlike unlike other unlike other RPG IPs. 
I couldn't. F I, the best that I was able to find were were um were it being an it being an inspiration in a group like like say it like it being an inspiration and other materials in a get in a gestalt. Um, the only mm. one that the only one that I can think of that explicitly name dropped tales exclusively is Anima Beyond Fantasy. The the crazy ass um, RPG from Spain that I, that I've that I've covered in the past. Um, interesting. And I, f I find I find that ki I find that kind of thing interesting. Primarily, primarily because of the fact that with with as as significant of a fan base that Tales has, and as long as it's been as long as it's been around, you would th you would think that there would have been more attempts. There's a full there's enough attempts with say Final Fantasy. That there's a that there's a lineage of there's a lineage chain that I that I can that I can draw from the early days of the Returners project, um, and a bunch of other projects that were loosely in, loosely inspired by it. Two of two of which came out, came out of Brazil, and only one of them is properly translated. Um, Suicoden has one called Fe, called Festivus. Um, I already mentioned Dark Souls has has a bunch. Um, yeah. Dragon Quest doesn't have any, but I think I think that's the exception to this rule because there isn't really enough in there that could that couldn't already be handled by by other systems. Although um, I will I will admit Ryutama take takes a bit of inspiration from Dragon Quest tone. Um. But be I'm very surprised that there's a Suikoden one, just because Suikoden. I would argue is much more niche compared to Tales. It isn't as well known and hasn't been an active series in at least what like 15 years. So that's yeah. surprising to me. Also, fuck you Konami. Yes, fuck Konami. Um Now gr now granted, now granted we um we are have we have we're much like a, much like a certain other Konami franchise, we're having a spiritual successor on the way with Aude and Chronicle. And in the interest of full disclosure, yes, I backed it. So did I. Um. But, be but beyond the but. I think, but I think, I think one of I think one of the key things that we'd have to address is. Aside from fan, aside from fan base, why do you why would you, why would you hazard a guess as to why um why Tales hasn't had as many attempts at tabletop adaptation? Hmm. Well, I don't see. I was gonna go with fan base because when you look at Final Fantasy, right? That I think. I think Final Fantasy has a more broad appeal compared to Tales. Um, I think people that have different tastes can enjoy the Final Fantasy series, especially since many of the Final Fantasy games are so different from each other, while the appeal of Tales is a little more niche. And I think it being less popular in general um, is also a contributing factor. But I also think that um, the types of people that would be willing to make the type of game, uh, the type of tabletop, you know, that would be befitting of Tales, that those people wouldn't, I don't, I don't know if a lot of those people would be Tales fans to begin with. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. But aside from that, um, it's hard to say because I I would imagine that Tails does have the building blocks to create a good tabletop. Um, so I don't know if maybe it uh, and, and in a in an official capacity I don't know if maybe the uh, the IP holders are very strict and they just they they don't want to just give it out willy nilly and just allow anyone to just you know do whatever they want with it. Um, but I'm, it's, it's really hard to say because there's a lot of material to work with in the tail series, whether it'd be making a tabletop that is, uh, 
taking inspiration from multiple games in the series or making one based on a singular entry. In the same way that I, w I would argue you could very easily make a tabletop that's based solely in FF7's world and another one that's based solely in FF10's world. I think you could do the same with Tales. You could do one that's based solely in um, the world of Tales of the Abyss and you can make another one that's based solely in the world of Tales of Berseria and I think they could function. Um, pers personally, I th personally, I think that, th I think that there's some, I think that there's some other problems that, pro that provide, that provide an obstacle simply from my perspective as a, as a wannabe designer. Um, okay. chief, chief among them is a consistency issue. Now, mm -hmm. you look at, you look at, so you look at Suikoden. For instance, what are what are some of the key things that are, that are, that are always that are always um al always always present in any Suicoden game? Um, tier crease notwithstanding, actually, actually, I can actually I can kind of put tier crease in this, and uh, I can't talk well, about I can't talk about record of a hundred years because that never got translated. Uh, always turn based and always one hundred and eight. Uh characters that you can enlist those are two things but there's a few other things that i do i do feel i do feel should be focused on well but, i'm not as familiar with sweet code so i'll let you enlighten me um the rune system is one of them okay where, you, where all where all all, ma all magic and some and some magic like effects are all based are all based on the rune system that has that has a spell slot set up which is why um I've had issues get, getting on, with, getting in bed with um, Suikoden. You typically will have the tr will have the trin will have the trinity of sm of of skirmishes, which is your which is your regular mm -hmm. battle system. The large scale battles, which don't happen as often, but do, but are no, but are enough of the thing that they have that have, they have become a staple, and duels. Which are glorified rock paper scissors, but they are still they are still a thing. Okay. Um. Because of because of the fact that those have those have been relatively consistent thr throughout the setup, as well as the as well as the fact that, um, that is that the that the um rules rules regarding runes haven't didn't change all that much. There's material to work with. And of course, of course, you have things like recurring characters and recurring spe recurring species and the like. Um, let's shift let's shift this over to um, Final Fantasy. You ha the job system is an icon of it. There are there are certain yes. there are certain races that are unique to Final Fantasy. You're not you're not going to you're not going to see a you're not going to see a Viera in a different IP, for instance. Um, <laughs> there are there, there things things like things like crystals, things like certain characters, certain that have been recurring. Every game has to have somebody named Sid. Um, the the summons, no matter what their name is, are largely con are largely consistent. Um, yeah, typically there is always an Ifrit and a Shiva. Mm -hmm. If Ifrit, Shiva, Ramu. Um, Levi Leviathan, Bahamut. There are, yeah, there are of course Bahamut. ones that ones that come ones that come and go over the years, but there but um the majority of them are relatively consistent to the point to the point where yes. you can you can play the eye you can play the eyeball test with them. Um, yeah, yeah. The design the design the design may change, especially Efreet. He's you look at Efreet in the early days. He's where he was very he was still very gin like. And as time has gone on, he's looked more bestial. Yeah, uh, when you yeah when you compare him, just even like in FF Seven, mm -hmm. where he took, just kind of looks like a dude that's a little that's got some gnarly teeth, and then you look at him in FF Fourteen, he looks like a literal demon. Mm -hmm. It's it's a far cry. Yeah, the er the earlier designs is. Is large is largely because well Ifrit is a, is a type of genie, um, a, ver, a, ver, a very mm. violent one, but still but still a genie, which is why there's that why there was that semi humanoid appearance. Um, I see. 
but as time as time has gone on, he's he's kind of had he's kind of had aspects of a um, almost almost lion like. Um, FF10 especially, he has more of that that lion appearance. Mm -hmm. Shiva's always just been a hot chick that's with blue skin. <laughs> yeah, and um, when you it it's one of those things where you'd probably where you'd probably t there's a bit of a there's a bit of a theory that's going on for a while that um, she that Shiva isn't supposed to be a nod to the Hindu creator destroyer, but was rather a mistranslation of Shiver. Which is an ice, which is an ice nymph in, um, in in I think I and I think Irish or British myth. That would make sense, but we're kind of stuck with the name. Yeah, it's 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 one of the it's one of the it's one of those th it's one of those things. And give, given how translation in the early days was spotty, it's one of those things where I could believe, but it's never outright been said. Um, right. If. And when it comes when it comes to jobs, while while of course Dragon Quest has a job has had a job system as well, um, the the reason why you, when you mention job or class system, people are going to think of Final Fantasy is because there's because a lot of the jobs that it has have motifs and the like that are unique to it. Um, yes, when you think of a dragoon, you think of Final Fantasy IV, mm -hmm. for example. You know, you think of Kane. Yeah, um, when it comes, whether whether dragoons, dark, dark knights, um, while bar while bards have while bards have been it have been in plenty of have been in plenty of games, but people people will hear the will hear um, Spoonie Bard and they'll immediately think of they'll immediately think of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it there's of course there's of course the fact that the different colored mages are are unique to that setup. Yeah, blue mage, red mage, black mage, white mage. Mm -hmm. um, the reason the reason I bring up bard earlier is that is that if there's any cla if there's any um, class that was that's closer to the classical type of bard, it's the red mage, honestly, rather than the bard bard. Interestingly, in Final Fantasy fourteen, the bard is also an archer. Which does which does does make does make sense honestly. Um, yeah. It's, it's both a DP, It's both a DPS and a support class. Mm -hmm. Now, when it the, when it comes to t when it comes to tales, the connective the connective tissue when it comes to when it comes to that mythology, is not as is not as present. Tales games. Are um are not, are don't have don't have a whole lot of connective tissue to each other, and that's kind of, that's kind of where the problem lies. I can see that because instead of instead of because with a lot of with a lot of with some with a lot of the adaptations of say Sui Koden or or the Souls games or um or Final Fantasy, largely they are not focused on tr on trying to replicate one entry in the series but rather a rather a general a general vibe and that's that's why having that connective tissue is is important is from my perspective the the main connective t the main connective tissue is the battle system which we'll get to we'll get to that in a bit because that because that's going to be its own bundle of sticks um mm -hmm. the the um po the post the grade system that the whole po the whole post game grade system and so, and um not oh not a I'd say if I'd say a few names for summons but summons aren't as important it depends on the game mm -hmm. so in tales of symphonia for example summons are very important mm -hmm. um but then tales of graces f they're relegated to a uh, to side quest that you can unlock them for uh, a specific character, mm -hmm. but then turn around again and in Vesperia. Well, for the majority of Vesperia, um, summons don't play much of a role in the story. In the back half, they are reintegrated 
into the story and then become prominent. So it's very touch and go. And I'd say that they, compared to Final Fantasy, uh, in Final Fantasy, summons tend to be more important. Um, and even if they're not like a big focus of the story, they still tend to make a bigger impact than they would in uh, in a Tales game by comparison. Yeah. And I, I know I know somebody might reference say 12. Even if the even if the typical summons weren't in there, their names were and th- and those names are going to ha- are going to have weight when people hear them. Yeah, and and like in Final Fantasy 5 as well, summons are not super important in that game, but it is still the same summons. Mm-hmm. Now in in Tales though, they it is typically the same summons as well. Like um I think uh, Golem is in multiple ones. I forget the names because they're again they're not, they're not super important, but like mm-hmm. it is typically the same summons. Yeah, um, I'd say I'd say um, I'd say when it comes I'd say when it comes to item and upgrade systems, that's an, that's another thing that's that's all, that's always been present, and it's some um, that's sort that sort of up that sort of that sort of creation system. Is one of is one of those things that I all that I've always been of the opinion is um a is a poor fit for for that for that sort of game simply because equipment is semi linear in any game that's using the Dragon Quest method. Um, do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember back in the day when I when I said that the a, that the AP system in FF nine was in the wrong game. I I yes I don't agree with that but. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's it's on it's kind of on the it's kind of on the same principle. Um when you where if where um for all for all intents and purposes you're you're on you're on a relatively straight path when it comes to um character upgrading with their equipment. There is there isn't a whole there isn't a whole lot of a whole lot of um shift a whole lot of shifting. Um now, gr- now, granted, somebody can ab- somebody can abuse the c- item creation setup and and br- and break that. I am gu- I am completely guilty of this. Um. But e- but even within that, it's never it's never been full on consistent between games, and that's that's really the, that's really the big I- the r- the big hurdle that has to be has to be gone around. It go tails goes tails goes in so many di- in so many different directions. Um, that the connective tissue to trying to try and create a game that's trying to go for the feel of tales is significantly more difficult. And I'm I keep bringing up Final Fantasy in this, not to say not to say FF is better because I'm not interested in that kind of debate, but more more to show why I why I think a lot of um why a lot of FF based tabletop has come about. I did a full week special on it. Um, not too long ago, but there hasn't been there haven't been as many attempts to adapt with tales, either directly or indirectly. No, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so I th- I think th- I think the um, I think the I think the key thing that ha- that has that has to be a- that has to be addressed first and foremost, if someone were to do this kind of thing, is to figure out where a lot of things. Kind kind of overlap in a Venn in a Venn diagram. What's even What's even more tricky is is what is the is the is the um is one debate when it comes to ba- when it comes to the battle system that um I think the I think the right side has I think the right side has won out in the last few years to MP or not to MP. <laughs> <laughs> I um, yeah or. Or at least the series calls it TP, technical points. Yeah, but or same shit. Sp- if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it sure as hell ain't a goose. Uh, yep, yep. It's the it's literally the thing they just put a T instead. Mm-hmm. The point the point with that is when is um for the, for. In the early days, of course, there was there was the there was the there was the TP setup because it was the style at the time. But 
I think I think if I recall correctly, they first started introducing the CC um, setup right around. I think it was Destiny Two. Was either um, Destiny Two or Destiny? Uh, I believe Rebirth. Okay. Um, I think it was because Des the original Destiny didn't have it. Um, and then they remade Destiny on the PS2, and I and I'm fairly certain that the remake is the one that has that system. I can't remember at the top of my head whether the remake of Destiny came first or if Rebirth came first, but it's one of those two. Yeah. And then, then after that, we we had we had a fair bit of time with with a TP system again, and. In the last few, within the within the last, um, I'd say the last two, I'd say the last cup the last couple of games because Zillia Two had a TP system if, as I recall, and it um, did yes, and Zestria and Berseria did not. That's true, and um, also Hearts R, which. I don't remember. I don't remember if the DS version, which is the original version of Tales of Hearts, mm -hmm. I don't know if that had a TP system. But Hearts R, which is the Vita port slash remake, that did not have TP. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't point out um, Grace's F, which ha which we which yes. um, even though we will not defend the original Grace's, as that was a buggy mess trying to get on the Wii bandwagon. Um, the re the remake is a is superior in every way. Oh wait, I just looked it up. My bad. Don't want to spread misinformation. Hearts R did have TP. I just looked it up. All right. My bad. All right. We'll str we'll strike we'll strike that from the record. Strike though. strike that. Yeah. My bad. The point is, um, it's it's been something that's there, but that but then they then they went half in and half in and out, and and now now it's and now the fact that we've had I think. Once a rise comes around, we'll, we will have, we'll have had three games in a row that are that are using that kind of setup because I I don't think a rise is going back to TP. Ah uh, no, no, it's not. I don't think so. Oh, and truth truth be told, with what they're doing with it, it wouldn't make sense to do that. Um, I agree. Now, I will admit my own biases. I've always I've always had issues. From a from a design perspective of um, of the TP system in an action game like Tales, that's and that's simply because I don't I don't think that particular approach w with with um with that kind of limited resource really fits an a really fits an action game, and the the setup that the setup that they have when it comes to the linear I think the let me see it. Let me see if I can get it right. The linear flex range motion battle system. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, I I've always from from like a design standpoint, I've always understood the rationale behind the the MP TP system mm -hmm. because you don't want the player to just be able to use. Uh, the best moves all the time, right? Like mm -hmm. that that would just make them OP. And if they could just do it whenever, um, then the game would be a cakewalk. So from that perspective, I, oh, I always understood it from from that point of view. But the problem is that players do want to use their best moves. And what ends up happening is you've just created a, a limited resource wherein once they run out of it, then they're just stuck using normal attacks or it's, or spamming items. But then if they could if they could stockpile too many items, then that invalidates the system. So then they put the, the cap of only 15 items at a time. So with all that said, um, the idea of putting a limit makes sense and that's why uh tales of graces f i appeal to you so much mm -hmm. and to me because it managed to create a a way that makes it so that you can't just spam your most powerful attacks um but you could still you don't have a limited resource anymore you have 
uh, something that's much closer to like a stamina meter, where you could have like a burst of powerful attacks and then block or and dodge to build it back up again, and then you continue the onslaught. Mm-hmm. So, and and I think you and I agree that for an action game, that makes more sense. Yeah, I've never had an issue with there being a limiter. It it's it's more it's more of a bad choice in one sim- simply because um first off whenever whenever you have a whenever you have a limited resource that has some difficulty of recovery there's the temptation for players to to fall to fall into what I call what I call the um rainy day effect where you're holding, yeah. you're holding on to you're holding on to that one you're holding on to that one x potion till the end of time Thinking, thinking that you're going to need it for down the road, or you're holding, you're holding on to as you're being a miser with your MP setup, thinking that you're going to need, you're going to need it for the for the big difficult encounter that never ends up coming. It, re- it reminds me of uh, this picture I saw once, uh, where it said, I, "I can't use it now. What if I need it later?" And it's just an item screen where every single slot. Is an elixir maxed out to ninety nine? <laughs> Pretty much, and I will I will admit I give I give props to games like to games like um, Thief because because they didn't do that between chapters and your your equipment um, resets and you've got to you've got to you've got to spend the gold that you got from the last mission on get on getting equipment for the next one. So because, because of, yeah, because of that, you don't, you can't really do that. You can't really do the whole hold on to one potion until the end of days. Um, and because because of because of that, I think one of the things to, one of the things that can, that can be nailed down is for for a for a high for a hypothetical adaptation to tabletop, using a more using a more momentum based approach like CC or is is far it would be a be, would be a better ch- would be a better choice especially since now one one would think that something like that wouldn't um wouldn't convert over to a ter- to a turn based approach i di- i disagree because not because not every game because there are plenty of games that have an a- that instead of having a set of defined actions that you can take just have a set of action points and every action, every action that you take costs a certain number of action points. Um, Pathfinder mm-hmm. Second Edition has that. You have three action points every round. Some actions, co- some actions cost one. Some, some cost two. Some cost three. Some have a variable cost, and you, and um, and you can and it gives you it gives you leeway in in terms of how you're going to do it. Instead of saying, okay, you've got a move action, a standard action, and a free action. Um, and, but, but, uh, that, that brings us, that brings us to, but within, within all of that, when it comes to this Venn diagram, I do, th- I do think that the majority of, ta- of Tales games have still, have still been, have still been in that, um, mic- that's still been in that guest alt of high fantasy with elements of, st- with elements of steampunk or magipunk. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, now games like games like say Zillia Two have de- have deviated f- have deviated from that, but the deviations from the from that particular motif are few and far between. I think. Um, I would say Tales of Fantasia leaned harder into more straightforward fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I I think Destiny was when they. Uh, Le- started leaning more into like the steampunk aesthetic, mm-hmm. and they kind of ran with it from there. Uh, Symphonia for like the first half of the game is more straightforward fantasy, and then uh, the second half you go to a different world, and it's more not quite steampunk, but it, it's it, the world is a little more advanced. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you do have the the villains that have like vastly superior technology. Yeah, the reason I focus on this kind of thing is, I've um 
I've found it absolutely hilarious when when pe when people t when people get hung up on say the term fantasy in Final Fantasy and what and whether or not entries like seven, eight, ten, thir thirteen, and so and so on should be calling themselves fantasy when they have so many modern or even science fiction elements. Um. A lot. I'd say a lot of that is a, is a consequence of a lot of of people's um people's zeitgeist idea of what fantasy is being so, for lack of a better term, British. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, if you've got if you got a fucking rock, and using that rock summons a dragon, that's. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're you know on top of a building. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty fantasy. Yeah. But the but the point is is that is that there's this idea there's this idea that fantasy has to be this very specific thing, and when you look at when you look at a lot a lot of a lot of a lot of popular culture in in Japan and and even when it comes to the, even when it comes to the religious scene in Japan, that's that sort of dividing lines between genres doesn't really apply. You have you have you have you have elements of of other genres just th just thrown in and and mixed. Uh, when it c and the and because of that, trying to, trying to say trying to say that it's str that it's strictly medieval fantasy, as some people have have said, when it comes to when it comes to tales or when it comes to the um the eight and sixteen bit era of Final Fantasy or the likes of Final Fantasy Nine, it doesn't really apply because I realize it's I realize it's been a long since we stu since we studied hit since we studied history, but I don't remember there being I don't remember there being airships in the Pike and Shot era. Me neither. Um, <laughs> and to and to that to that particular end. It does. It does. I will admit, it does kind of annoy me that a lot of people's version of fantasy is is still on the high medieval end, and not and not enough on the um, not enough on the age of gunpowder. Like that's one of the th that's one of the things that makes something like Warhammer stand out is the fact that instead of going full, while it d while there's certainly some Tolkien elements, it's the titular Empire of Man is more is more reminiscent of the Holy Roman Empire than uh, than of um, of any British kingdom. For me, I think for something to be fantasy, it simply needs to have fantastical elements. Yeah. And that's... There's, there's of course, also the fact that um, one of the big reasons that The Witcher ended up becoming as big as it is even even though certain tr even though certain tryhards I will not name just write it just write it off as a bunch of plagiarism, which there are <laughs> which there are I will not deny the similarities, but I do think that I do think that's disingenuous because the big reason so, that some might say reductive <laughs> the big reason that The Witcher became such a huge deal, especially in Eastern Europe, is because is because of the fact that its brand of fantasy is so intrinsically tied to that to that region so in intrinsically oh, tied to Poland. eastern europe Pol Poland Poland especially but it yes. but it's not exclusive to that um if you if you need it if you need a more contemporary example of of this deeply rooted kind of thing are you familiar at all with the metro games i am aware of them i have not played them yet um now that started off as that started off as a as a book series in Russia, and the the big inspiration for it was the met was the Metro Underground Network in Moscow. Because because um, because the the author of that work looked at it as this could this could be potentially the world's largest nuclear bunker, and he ended up creating Metro twenty thirty three off of that off of that inspiration as well as reading books like Roadside Picnic. Which would be the inspiration for Stalker, and um, mm. Fallout. But when there was an when there was an attempt a few years ago to adapt Metro twenty thirty three into a film, when he found out that they were going to set the thing in DC, he shit canned the project. 
Interesting. Because in, in his mind, so so much of that so much of that story is intrinsically linked to to Moscow. That tr- that trying to take it out of there would only co- would only um would end up ki- would end up it being not Metro. And mm-hmm. because. Because of, because of because of that, I do th- I do think that when establishing the kind of fantasy that we see that we see in tales, I do think an aside should be should be brought up that do not do not approach this as medieval fantasy. Otherwise, you're otherwise you're going to be setting yourself up for problems. Feel fr- feel free I, to yeah, br- feel free to bring in elements from other from other styles of fantasy. Help. Um, you look at you look at some you look at plenty of the out. Uh, some of the character designs over the years, and none of them are. St- well, some of them are. Some of them lean. Some of them lean into the traditional approaches. Then you've. Then you've got. Then you've got some who are clearly not, like say, um, like say Sheena in, um, in Symphonia. Yeah, with very traditionally Eastern attire. Mm-hmm. Um. I'd say, or, or even in uh, Luger from Zillia too, who's wearing a very contemporary sort of suit, mm-hmm. you know, or, or rather like a, it's more of a vest, but yes, yeah. And there's, there's, a, there, I'd say, um, I'd say the, I'd say when it comes to Zestria, that that has a that has a bit of that has a bit of, um, I want to say First Nations leaning. To it, mm-hmm. especially 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 with the especially with the coat that that we that became that became a staple of that entry. Yes. Um, which I'd take one if they if I could get it in black. <laughs> um, that would look pretty good. Yeah. But the the. The point, the point with the point with that is, that's one. That's one of the things that has to be nailed nailed down for, first and foremost. And I've ca- I've kind of been dodging one other particular elephant in the room that I do think has to be addressed. To class, or not to class? That is the question. <laughs> is, I always called him Class with an L. Not the not, not that one's. Not that, not that partic, not that particular question, <laughs> but um, but you just did that just to be a smartass, didn't you? Maybe. Yeah, you did. Um, but no, for for now, um, this oddly enough, this doesn't end up being a problem with games that aren't um fa- aren't fantasy TRPGs. But when, but because of the prevalence of Dungeons and Dragons, whenever some, whenever somebody's doing a somebody's doing a fantasy RPG, there's always the question of whether or not you're doing a class system. And to be quite honest, I am I am of the opinion of that an adaptation of Tales into tabletop form should be more on archety- more on broad archetypes rather than straight up classes because. As far as I'm aware, a class system has, oh, in the traditional sense, has only been done twice, and both in the same sub-series, that being Tales of the World. Yes, which is uh, very decisively a spin-off, mm-hmm. and, and the different classes in those games are copy and pastings of pre-existing characters because a lot of the way that the characters fought um, in previous Tales games were typically representative of that specific character. While there have been overlapping techniques, like you're typically going to see Sword Fang or Demon Fang Mm -hmm. um, in a lot. That's like a very staple move. Um, Tons of the attacks are, again... Uh, specific to that character. Mm-hmm. Um, because and because uh, because of that, I th- I think I think an, I think a archetype approach is 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 ideal simply because 
trying to go trying to go full classless is something I wouldn't I wouldn't um go with it go with personally. I mean, you can certainly do it. It's just not going to be my choice. And the simple reason it can be summed up in two words: analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I think I see that. Simply, simply because when you when you look at just what just with the non-caster characters, the ones the ones who live and die on arts. The sheer amount of fighting styles and 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 potential weapons available is is blinding. Even characters that use the same weapons, yeah. um, like like Luke, for example, uh, uses a combination of his sword with martial arts, mm -hmm. uh, and compare that to Lloyd, who dual wields swords and obviously does not incorporate any martial arts, and it's purely sword fighting. Or or um, cons consider how um, the two the two the two central characters in Vesperia are, for all intents and purposes, sword wielders. Mm, yes, even though Yuri uh, uses uh, swords and axes interchangeably, and he also does uh, incorporate some martial arts with his fighting style, but it not not compared to Luke. Luke, by comparison. Uh, incorporates incorporates a lot a lot more punching and kicking, um, and 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 sweeps compared to to Yuri, who does focus more on attacking with the weapon itself. Yeah. And within you can, and um within even and furthermore, that's that um just just within just just within those those three. There is mm -hmm. there is the possibility, of course, that you could have you could have a short list of obvious weapons and get and give each a tree, but that presents another problem. Um, when it comes to arts, which we'll get into a bit, the the approach that the approach that I would that I would personally go with would probably be more in line with the way um, Anima Beyond Fantasy does things, where because of the fact that it's taking notes from Rollmaster. Your class per se is more of an archetype. What it determines is how easy or difficult it is to ad to advance things. I.e., how i.e. every time you level up in um, Anima, you get a certain number of points, and depending on your class, some things are going to be less expensive to advance, and some things are going to be more expensive to advance. You can still you can still it doesn't tell you you can't. It's just saying that it's gonna that it's gonna cost more. I see. Yeah, yeah. And I think I th I think I think using the I think using those sort of those sort of broad archetypes instead, so that you can have you can have a proverbial fighter archetype in this sense that is th that is that do that doesn't require all of them to be exactly the same setup. Cause if I mm -hmm. if I were to, if I were to convert if I were to convert say ga say guy. From, from, t from, t from Tales of the Abyss. I would, yeah. I would prob, I would probably have, I would probably have to do, if I, if I were using um, the D twenty system, I'd have to do several bits of multi classing. I, in my mind, guys' fighting style is more reminiscent of like a samurai, but even then, it's not quite one to one. And because because of, because of that, a a bro a broader a broader approach need, needs to be taken. And um, before I mm -hmm. before I get to arts, because I want I want to tackle arts and casting in their own little group, mm -hmm. because, because they because they because um how, because of how semi linked they are, they are to each other. I mean, they're going to be using the same resource anyways. Um. I do want to tack I do want to tackle races and this is where the this is where the other connective tissue issue comes along. There have been, I would say the majority of your party of your parties in throughout the games in the Tales series have been human or with with only a few cases of um de of demi-human or straight up non-human. Yes, uh, most of the party members are pretty much just human characters. Um, 
uh, there's not a lot of examples of non-human characters. Mm-hmm. Um, now, granted, uh, granted, some sometimes you have sometimes you have demi demi humans like say J- like say Judith who is, who is pretty is pretty much an elf. Um, yes, yes, but even then, in her case, she's that's basically a human for all intents and purposes, just with a slight design change. Yeah. Which is which is probably why it's the kind of elf that doesn't piss me off. <laughs> it also helps that she's pretty hot, so yeah. there's that. Um, but the the point is is the point is is that when you look at a, when you look at a lot of not a lot of non a lot of um, demi human or non human races within a, within a lot of fantasy games, um, for for one, they um they ha- they'll usually have a compl- have a significantly different stat setup. Two, especially in recent years, they'll have some they'll have some kind of trick that's unique to them, and that latter entry is not re- is not really a factor. Even when even when using some someone like Ju- someone like Judith, um, the her her status as an elf I think is only reflected in a f- in a few arts, but is more reflective in story rather than in mechanics. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and because 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 of that, I um, I am of I am of I am of the I'm of the opinion that instead instead of instead of instead of ha- instead of doing the typical race approach, I f- I feel that I feel that in this hypothetical. That kind of thing should be replaced with background. I e. Ah, uh, okay, okay. What kind of what kind of envi- what kind of environment did you come from? Were you were you somebody who grew up who grew up on the outs of a place? Were you somebody who grew up in a more privileged society? Were you somebody who is is a is a farm boy? Are you somebody who who grew up in a in a large city? That ha- that I think has 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 more weight. Um, I would totally agree with that. Just because, as we've established, there's some, unfortunately, kind of just a, how the series is, there's a lack of variety in the races. Um, like, Tales of Symphonia has elves and half-elves. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's the, de- like like you said, with uh, Vesperia, the demi-human. Um, and I'm trying to think of other examples. There's just not much. Um I was about. I was actually about to to give an example until I realized. No, wait, that's Star Ocean. That doesn't count. <laughs> we may do this with Star Ocean one of these days, but that but today is not that day. Um. No, no. But yeah, I think focusing more on the backstory of the characters and uh, where they came from makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we were to, and if this was an, if we if we decided to, um, can kind of make this. An amalgamation of the different tales of worlds. I think that could also um, widen the variety of backstories that you could possibly have. Because, like, the upbringing of a character in uh, Symphonia would be very different compared to the upbringing of a character in Zillia or Legendia, for example. Yeah, but even even with even with that, there's st- there's still um. There's still cer- there's still certain commonalities when it comes to character archetype backgrounds, much in the si- much in the same way that um, Joseph Campbell would al- would always talk about heroic archetypes in his work. I'm pretty sure that's all he liked to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I I, br- I bring that I bring that kind of thing up because you because there because there are cer- there are certain. There are certain commonalities, and with within this ki- within this kind of concept, what we're looking for is a Venn a Venn diagram where where we're focusing on where everything intersects. And yes, there's there's also the there's also the fact that the the within the with when I when I look at the um, when I look at the ad- the adaptations of of the of the Souls games or of Final Fantasy or of Suicoden as I've mentioned as we've mentioned before none mm-hmm. of them are expressly tied to one 
game's setting or even one setting period it's more it's more about providing you a few buckets of paint for you to paint on a canvas to e to either ad to either adapt an existing one or create your own and the and the latter is going to be fa is going to be far more important i um not too long ago i did a value the judged episode on a dice breaker interview for the upcoming tabletop adaptation of avatar and one thing that i took Avatar The Last Airbender? Yes. Okay, not James Cameron. Good. I think there's some stuff I think there's some stuff that could be a, that could be adapted into tabletop with James Cameron, but not but not important. Um I I I've just actually finished watching Avatar The Last Airbender not that long ago. So, good choice. Mm -hmm. Um there were there were a couple major problems I had in that Dicebreaker interview. One um, them using powered by the apocalypse. I feel. I feel. It's a, I feel one. It's not. It's not the best choice for what they want to do. And two, it's already been done by someone else. In fact, it, in fact, Avatar has been adapted a lot into a lot of different systems over the years. And no, adapted a lot in general. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the but the other the other bi the other big problem is they spent is in that interview they spent way way too much time. Talking about how talking about how people could in, could use the use the game to do to do stories like what were shown in the, in the shows. That is a ma that is a massive mistake that I see a lot of people tackle whenever they whenever they tackle these kind of adaptations, because for the most part, I don't think it's arrogance of me to say that a lot of people who who would t in our case. Somebody who's be pick who'd be picking up a tabletop adaptation of Tales is not really interested in do in doing it in doing campaigns set in set in the world of Zesteria, set in the world of Innocence, set in the world of Symphonia, set set in the world of De of Destiny. What they would be interesting interested in is using those as inspiration for doing their own setting that's not far that is inspired by those aforementioned games, but isn't directly based on them. I think that's fair. Um, I um, I've had I've had I've had this I've had this kind of discussion in the past when people when people have talked about adapting very various anime or video games into tabletop form, and this is a this is a trap a lot of people fall into fall into. That's oh that's all. And because of that, that's why when it comes to something like background, I think a bigger focus should be on on broad ar broad archetypes of where someone ca where someone came from. It doesn't matter what city specifically they came from. What matters is they gr they grew up in a in a densely populated environment, or they grew up in the fucking woods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna produce a very different individual. Yeah. It doesn't matter what woods they gr it doesn't matter what woods they grew up in. It's it's all that matters is that they grew up in the, they grew up in the woods prop and were prop and were likely relatively isolated until until they became some kind of adventurer. Right, right. Um and be this br this brings me to this brings me to the to the issue of of arts and casting. I want to tackle arts first because, mechanically speaking, that's going to be the easier one to deal with. <laughs> okay. Rel rel relatively, it's st it's still it's still good. It's it's kind of, it's kind of like it's kind of like saying it's it's kind of like saying it's e it's it's e it's easier to, it's easier to climb the Andes than it is to climb Mount Everest. You're still climbing a fucking mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. When. I do n I do not think one of the big hur one of the big hurdles when it comes to doing arts is for one th if we were if we were to li if we would have a we would have way too huge of a list if we were if we were to just use all of the arts from the games up to this point yeah no don't even bother <laughs> two is the f is the fact that 
summit is the fact that um, if, if we did that list, we'd have a lot of arts that would likely have different names, but for all intents and purposes would be the same thing. Yeah, I, I think some of them are like that due to uh, just changes in localization. So, for example, in Tales of Eternia, which was actually called Tales of Destiny 2 when it was released over here. Mm -hmm. um, so, it has an ability called Swarm, which, for all intents and purposes, is exactly the same as Sword Rain. And I believe that they are the same ability, but between the two localization teams, they just decided to change the name. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going to have weirdness like that come up as well. But uh, even even putting something like localization aside, there are going to be just certain attacks that are... Um, some attacks are basically uh, like evolutions of another attack. So like mm -hmm. so Sword Rain, you have Sword Rain, Sword Rain Alpha, Sword Rain Beta... These are all essentially the same attacks, but they get, they're they incrementally, you know, better versions of each other. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to add attacks. And even moving aside from that, you, you're going to find abilities from different characters that fulfill the same sort of function. So, like, you have an ability by uh, Yuri, in terms of Vesperia. I forget the actual name of the attack, but... What he essentially does is he'll start punching the enemy a bunch of times. Mechanically speaking, that's not very different from Sword Rain, which is a bunch of sword thrusts. Mm -hmm. Now, I w now when it comes to because now th this brings us to one other issue. Um, now I'm I'm going to be making an FF comparison, but I'm but but um, it's going to be something related to a thing that I'm that I'm currently developing. Because okay. off and on, I've been developing a Final Fantasy TRPG that's based on the Legend system. Um, because I love, I love it. It has the best, it has the best multi-classing event of any setup I've seen. Um, one of the things that we de that we decided to not do to not do is um, is is the traditional approach to limit breaks. Um, mm. Now some games have had it have had a build a limit break using a using a point system of advantages and disadvantages. Um, what we decided to do instead was ha was have limit breaks that were that you could that you could pick from that were intrinsically tied to each um, class and each and each job track. Um, and the big reason that we did this is when you look at the limit breaks throughout the series, they are very character focused. And it would be it would be significantly uh, it would be significantly nonsensical for somebody who is not Squall to be using Renzo Kuken. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, so in, so instead instead we just went we just went with a generic set of benefits that are tied to are tied to each class that you, that you're going to be picking two, you're going to be picking two from that you'll have access to in the same in the same vein. When it comes to arts, I would say a large amount of them are are very character focused, and a lot. And I'd say all of the higher tier ones are explicitly character focused. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, because 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 of the, that's that's one of the things that makes trying to do a traditional list kind kind of redundant, and. Some may, the the funny th the funny thing is um, I recently came across a five e a D and D five e adaptation of Naruto that did that did have a um, a set a straight up jutsu list, but I think I think that one was able to get away with it for two, for two reasons. One mm -hmm. is the is the whole letter grade rank that's that's often seen th throughout, as well as as well as the fact that there's a foundation to be built around with the whole element release set up in that series. So you so you've got a you've got a skeleton to work with. For... You know, thinking uh, real quick, thinking about it, character focus attacks. It's even 
it gets even funkier when you consider how, uh, and this is going to be something that they're going to incorporate in Tales of Arise based on what I've seen on footage. But in Tales of Zillia's 1 and 2 in particular, there were uh, character-specific attacks that were in conjunction with other characters. So now you have attacks that are based on the personalities of multiple characters at once. Yeah. Which, that that's like a whole fucking can of worms in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And of of course of course things like un, things like unisons don't exactly help, right? Right. Um, because 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 of that, mm-hmm. this is this is one this is one instance where I where I think I think a I think a build and art system has to has to be applied. Where, where, i.e., i.e., a certain set of points are given, and you use that to use that to determine, okay, is okay, is this melee or ranged? Is this using an element? How many, how many, how many attacks is, is it getting? Is it getting, and so on. And of course, the more points you put on it, the more ex, the more expensive it's going to be. I think the I think the reason this has to be done is simply is simply because the a more traditional method of of a list of generic arts would be too long. Um, yes, yes. That br- that brings me to an up to another issue when it comes to this. Do you do you think do you think that art use should be connected or divorced from choice of weapon? Hmm. I think. Hmm. I think a lot. Of, I think in a lot of cases, um, the arts are tied to the weapon. So, for example, um, sword rain. It's literally in the name, mm-hmm. and some of the some of the arts that Luke uses, for example, is a combination of using his sword and martial arts, and and, and abilities like that wouldn't make sense for like. A lancer, for example, mm-hmm. it it doesn't make sense for uh, a character to be stabbing with his lance and then switching to like punching someone in the face. That doesn't make any sense. Although, given th- given that, I th- I think the I th- I think we I think we wouldn't even u- need to deal with that issue because, due to it being point based, we're essentially get we're essentially giving the creation tool to cr- to creating arts. To the table, to the, to the players. Mm-hmm. So okay. because because of that, all we all we'd be creating is a series of effects, and be up to the player to visualize it. Okay, that makes sense. So it does. If if we have if we have it that the uh, that that a given art is supposed to be doing say piercing damage, and I'm just ass pulling with this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it. It doesn't matter if it's from a long sword, a rape, a rapier, or a or a spear. All th- all that matters is all that matters is that it's doing is that it's doing piercing damage. It could even be from hand to hand for all for all we for all we know. Yeah, fair enough. Um. Give, given that give this is also the reason why I think using. A momentum system with a lower num- with a lower number crunch would be more ideal, because if we were to use a traditional TP approach, we'd ha- we'd have to calculate how much how much is getting added or subtracted, um, t- to the to the art's total cost based on based on how many elements are added. Sure. Um and. And I think um, relying on the TP system, while that is very like old traditional tales, um, it's. I don't think it's something that we need to adhere to in order to capture the spirit of this franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's all there's also the also the fact that when it com- that um. When it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the higher tier entry of of arts, whether that I'd I'd say I'd say when it I'd say when it comes to when it comes to unisons, that's going to be something that would that would have to be crunchy no matter what we do. Um. 
I'd pro I'd probably ha I'd probably mm -hmm. have it that who that whoever is whoever's doing a whoever's whoever are when it comes to that it's a, it's more of you're you're agreeing to put aside a, cer a certain number of elements that are going to be that are going to be shared. Um, mm -hmm. If he, if I even if I even did unison attacks, I'm not even I'm not even sure if we if we'd even do it simply because of the crunch factor involved. Right, right. Um. And I will now, of co of course, when it when it there is one other there is one other thing wor worth addressing in this, and that's um, the matter of get of getting new arts. I am I am not a fan of do, of doing the whole. Oh, you you learn you learn them by RNGs this be, be, during in the middle of battles. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've never really been a fan of that mechanic either. I think just learning things through just. Hey, you level you're you're level fifteen. Okay, you get that ability. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. oh. Or or even you know through one of these um, skill tree type systems, I think has always worked better. Yeah, I um, I do I do remember I do remember really liking the um, even though even though some people called it called it too much of called it too close to a sphere grid. I remember really liking the. Oh, the flower-like advancement setup in Zillia. Yeah, I liked it too. I um, thought it was a uh, that was really good. I I wasn't as I wasn't as fond of the of the um of the setup in um in Z in Zillia two. I think the problem with it in Zillia two was the lack of long-term planning. Um, it was. It, I think it allowed a little bit more freedom in comparison to Zillia ones, but it but it was a very short term. Um, you couldn't really see beyond a certain point the way that it was designed, and that made it difficult to know. Like, okay, well, if you, if I want this specific skill, what do I need to do? And you do, you would have to look up a guide in order to do that. And I don't think that was the right decision. When you compare that to the title system in Tales of Graces, for example, it gave you a very clear indication of if you want this specific um spell for example for this character it gave you a very clear guideline of like okay just do this and you'll get it mm -hmm. and where and of co of course when it of course when it came to the, now something like that orb system i i will note i had i have no desire to use that in this hypo in this hypothetical be simply because mm -hmm. one i'm not that good of a graphic designer Two, I'd have to set, I'd have to set up a tree for e for every archetype, and that's and that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> and th and three, um, there's to 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 steal to steal a line from Batman Forever. It just raises too many questions. I think a I think Fair a, enough. I think a good old fashioned leveling setup where you're get. Especially, especially given the freeform things that we've talked about, where you're getting a set, you're getting a set of points, is at e at each level up that you're using to, that you're using to put into, is going is going to be the best um, the best the best approach. Um, when it, um. When it comes now, of course there have of course there have been su there have been subtypes of of um art of arts over the years. Um, like and some some of them we some. Of, oh. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I thought I thought that there were some technical issues. But I'd. But before we get into before we get into spells, I do think, I do think that um, that the that the concept of mystic arts or which, or their and their derivations is one thing to address. Um. 
when it when it comes to when it comes to them I got, I got you, I got you, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no worries. We can, we can, pr I can skip over that. But bef before we, before we do get mm -hmm. to the wrap up, there is one, um, there is one issue, there is one little um, issue that I think, I think we need to address bef in order to have a umbrella of what, uh, what we're dealing with. And that is, um, that is spells. Yes. Is. Even though even though spells are are just ca are called magic arts in some games, they're for all intents and purposes under a completely different system. So, tr so trying to put them into the arts umbrella doesn't really stick. I agree with that. They they feel they definitely function differently, and trying to force them in there would be putting a, a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, fortunately, with this kind of thing. Um, while while some of the while some of the name conventions with spells um, aren't as consistent as I as I'd like, the mm -hmm. thing that that is largely consistent is how they're used. It's always it's always a it's always a charge. You have you have to stand still charging that charging that spell before you can utilize it. Yes. And be. Now, and granted, after that you have that you have that whole you can you can't cast again for a few seconds, much like you couldn't use items at, for a few seconds after using it. Which I was, I understand why they did it. It's, it it just oh it just always felt kind of arbitrary. Yeah, it it's kind of like a, a, what I was talking before in in from what their perspective, it's just a matter of not allowing the player to spam and. Uh, just to keep a sense of balance, I have played. To in their defense, um, I have played other games that have copied the Tales formula poorly, and it makes you appreciate the the lengths that they go to keep things balanced. Mm -hmm. Because in these other games, it, it was they didn't have those considerations, and the games were a complete joke as a as a result. I'm looking at you, Artanelko Koga. I I still I still haven't played Quoga. You're not missing much. Oh. I'm sorry to say. I've I have been I have been curious into trying our no surge simply because that was a, that because of the whole crossover nature of that. I haven't tried it, so no comment. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, hopefully it's uh, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Um. But what? But. I do I do think that I do think that the I do think that the char that the charge setup prov provides it provides us a good provides us a good enough framework. Um I am in I am in favor of having of having spells be of having spells be custom built just as much. I'd probably even have them use the same point resource that arts do. So if you if you want to go gish, you can. If you want to go full if you want to be full caster, you can, but but um mm -hmm. If you decide if you decide to go hybrid with this kind of thing, it's gonna come at a cost. Right. Um. Because you there's been because there's a fair, there's a fair amount of characters throughout the series that have that have kind of been on the gish end of things, but because but because of how divorced casting is from arts, um, they um they can go entire encounters without do, without doing any casting. Um. So the 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 approach that the approach that I'm considering is, since I uh, since obviously we're not using the MP setup, I think everything should go down to charges. I, I think I yeah charges makes the most sense, yeah. and I think like we were saying before, um, it the, TP is not. I I don't think it defines the series, and the most important thing with the tabletop game is to uh capture the spirit of the series and i think this works just fine for that uh explicit purpose yeah what a, the approach the approach that i'm thinking of is put is putting the casting speed in the hand in the hands of players um so mm, it, it that's has, a good that's a good idea 
let's let's say let's say that we use let's say we use the idea that every that um that you you have a maximum of five uh five at five AP I'm going with AP just out of habit that you have every round if you hold if you just if you get you get you start with two you can have up to five you get two you get two more at the start at the start of each round um if you're choosing to do a spell if you're choosing to do it to cast a spell it would have it would have a, it would have an action cost that you can either pay all at once or you can pay over multiple turns oh sounds good um the approach that I'm the approach that I'm thinking of is that if you if you decide to go with if you decide to go with all at once it's going to it's going to cost you in terms of the the um, potency of the spell so so a, so take taking yeah. your time taking your time it's going to be more powerful but you're going to be a sitting duck right risk reward essentially mm -hmm. I, I always like I always like putting in risk reward systems and th this kind of thing yeah. is no exception. Um, and of, of risk course, reward and in general makes things more engaging. Yeah, um, I'm not in, I'm not really inclined to do to do something like to do something like mystic arts because I feel I feel like those should be a and should be an end of quest reward kind of thing instead of something built into the core mechanic. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, all right. That makes sense. Um. Is especially especially given how the how um I think in I think in how the term ogi is used in um in the Japanese versions of of the games and that usually translates to to um either secret art or succession art you know they it's yes. the it's the typical is the typical approach of this technique that is de, that is def, that is the definitive representation of say a sword school or some or some similar kind of group that. Is treated as a rite of passage when getting it. We've seen we've seen that kind of thing a lot of the master passing on a secret technique to a student. Yes, yes, I, and that's something that was uh, that particular idea was something that was very prominent in Tales of Fantasia, mm -hmm. and where the the main character Kles would uh, he would go around the world and he would learned from these masters and they would pass down the arts to him yeah and of and of course that of course you can also use that to tie into how um how with with the in the in some of the times when summoning has been a thing like in symphonia um it wasn't something that you would just get you had to er you had to earn that pact yeah so we cut so because of that you can have a bit of unification in in within this particular setup um i would say when it comes to the grade system honestly i would ki i would kill that off i agree i don't i can't really think of a way that that would fit and again it's it, it may be something that's like really common in the in the in the series but I don't think it's something that defines the series, um, and I, I don't think it's necessary to. Uh, I think it would. I think if we put it in the in the tabletop. It would feel shoved in. It it would feel kind of like an appendage that doesn't need to be there. At best, I could I could see that getting integrated into an advancement system, but I don't. Maybe. I don't. But but at that at that point. It would just be it would just be a form of XP as currency, and I and I wouldn't need, I wouldn't need to do that. Although, and especially especially since if I'm doing that, well, oh, why don't I why don't I just call it XP? Um, right, right. Grade in your first playthrough of a Tales game doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You're right. It, that's it's something that's really relegated to New Game Plus. And so, uh, uh, yeah, and and with that in mind, <laughs> that's not something that I would I think lends itself to tabletop that well. No, I've I've done new I've done I have dipped my toe into integrating new game plus like like mechanics, but every time I've done that, there was there was a narrative arc to it. Like say you like say the characters were in some kind of time loop, or or um 
the campaign was taking place over multiple generations. Because I have, because I've used, because um, Dragon Valor was was a inspiration for me. But overall, overall, the big takeaway from all of this is that it is possible to adapt tales into mm-hmm. tabletop form, but it isn't something that you can do willy nilly. You do, ha- you do have to, de- you do have to have an understanding of the sort of the source material that you're doing. And you can't ju- you can't just straight port over um, one particular game and call it a day. I think it would require um, a decent amount of research mm-hmm. and going over the each of the games and really f- getting a feel for what is what makes a game a tales game and getting a good understanding as to how to incorporate those elements into the tabletop. Yeah. Um, RPG experience, and that doesn't. Requ- I don't think it requires anyone to, anyone to do a hundred percent playthrough of all of all the games, especially in, no. with the advent of wikis and you and YouTubes and the like. But I do, no, I do no. think it would require a bit a bit of some a bit of some deep some some deep diving and prop and probably getting very very acquainted with the Acelia wiki. Yeah, I, ba- basically, yeah. Uh, a, 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 a casual cursory glance would definitely not be enough. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and if, if someone listening to this has uh, the intentions to want to make one someday, um, then really acclimate yourself to the series. And if need be, get other fans to comment and to you know critique and take a look at what you have in order to get something that, uh, you know, because m- more than anything, it's the spirit of the series that's most important. Mm-hmm. Because if you're making a tabletop based on it, you want something that feels like it. So you want to be as true to that as possible. Yeah. But with with that said, I think I think that will provide an effective capstone for this particular adventure. Um, I'll we'll be back. We'll be I'll be back again. Very, very shortly, with with some with some more with some more shen- with some more shenanigans in this regard, and this was this was certainly a lot of fun, and I hope to I hope to do this again with with you in the future. Of course, uh, I'm I'm open for more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, there's all there's always going to be plenty of ins- plenty of insanity in all forms, right here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.